I wrote on my uh, hand today, is there anything too hard for God? Sometimes we look at things and we think it's too hard. Sometimes we think, how could this ever happen? Is there anything too hard for God? Come on, let this mind, let, get this into our mind. Let, let's get this into us. There's nothing too hard for God, is there? You know, God's made us the head and not the tail. We can do what? All things through Christ who strengthens us. We can carry an anointing that, that, that's something amazing. You know, it's the anointing that will break the yoke. It's not good works, it's not good intentions, it's not good ideas, it's not good philosophies or whatever it is, but it's the anointing. It's the anointing. And you know what the, what the enemy wants to take away from the church is the anointing. Because take the anointing away from the church, we're just another, another mob. We're just another bunch of people going around, uh, you know, doing very, very little. But I believe today that there's something dynamic and powerful that we need to grab hold of, and that is that it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And Lord, we, we ask, we can sing, you know, anoint me with fresh oil. Fill me, Spirit of God. Could we raise our hands today and just say, God, anoint me with fresh oil. Fill me, Spirit of God. Touch me afresh, Holy Spirit. Awaken, awaken things within me. Oh my God, have your way in me and I'll give you all the praise and I'll give you all the glory. Raise us up as a great army. In Jesus' name, amen. The sleeping giant called the church is awakened by the fire, by the fire of God. You know, John the Baptist, they came and they asked him, are you the one? He says, no, I'm not the one, but there's one coming after me. I'm not even worthy to carry his sandals. But when he comes, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. We speak a lot about the Holy Spirit here. We speak a lot about, you know, different things. But friends, I think today we've got to understand the Holy Spirit even in a greater dimension than I've ever tried to express or even understood because it's, he wants to anoint us. He wants to empower us. He, he wants to come inside us in such a dynamic way that, that, that you know, great things will be done that we'll be able to speak out of that anointing, speak out of that anointing. I, I can remember once when, when uh, I first got saved and, and, uh, and I was a smoker when I first got saved. And actually I'd been saved for quite a while and I was totally convinced that I was gonna be a smoking Christian. <laughs> I, I honestly did. I, I just thought this thing has got me so bad, I'll never be able to give it up. Uh, this, is, this is it, this is, this is it. <laughs> and uh, I remember that one day as we were in a prayer group and uh, I used to light up while we were doing the, uh, the, the study <laughs> and, uh, but I would never smoke while we were praying. I was very, very reverent. <laughs> but you know, I'd smoke away there and, and these people were very, very gracious and one day this Methodist lady walked up to me and she said these words, Neil, do you realize your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? the carrier of the Holy Spirit. Do you realize that? And I said, yeah. And she said, well, why are you polluting it? Now, immediately from that moment on, I've never smoked since. I have used those words a thousand times on people and say, what, well, who cares? <laughs> because you see, when that lady spoke it to me, there was an anointing on her life. And that's, what we've got, that's where we've got to get to that we have become carriers of the anointing. That we become carriers of the anointing. Let me say it again. That we become carriers of the anointing. That when we speak, the anointing flows out of us. You see, the Bible says this. It says, speaking about the Holy Spirit, it says, when He comes, out of your innermost being is going to flow what? Rivers of what? Not just water, but living water. And you know, we talk about the river of God. It says wherever the river goes, it brings life. And you see, our words are meant to bring life, not death. Too many times condemnation will bring death. Too many times we do something that we try to do, but it doesn't work because we're, we're condemning people, trying to think that that will stop them from doing what they're doing. It won't stop them. If you tell a kid today what they're doing, they're going to hell, they say, who cares? It's where all my mates are. They've got no understanding. They've got no, but you, you can get beside somebody with the anointing and that anointing will break the yoke. It'll break the stronghold around their lives 
And we've seen it many, many times as people just come under that unction, under the, under the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and you know, it might, you might be in a, in a massive meeting and all of a sudden one person, two people, three people, tears might start rolling down their cheeks, but it doesn't touch the rest of the people. But it's touched those ones. Touch those ones. It's the anointing, friends. It's the anointing that we need. It's the anointing of God, I believe, that is going to come to the church. We've got to, I believe that God wants to do restoration. And I believe, you know what he wants to restore? He wants to restore us back to the original. <laughs> back to a relationship with God. Back to, a, to an understanding that God loves us so much as Shane so wonderfully spoke this morning. What an amazing thing for, for a young man of 14 years of age to be crying out to God. You think God would be too busy with all the, all the big shots, with the mega churches and things like that. But here's a 14-year-old kid in a small, small meeting insignificant most probably in his own sight but not in God's sight crying out to God and God just came down and with that a wonderful anointing how many people want that if I lift up your hands and say come on I want I want I want to be like that I want to be so transparent I want to be so open that you can do that for me too in Jesus name amen we get to a place where God can help us amazing thing you know, in Galatians, and I'm, I want to just continue, and I, I want to go over some things because, really, this this teaching that we've been doing lately has has greatly, greatly challenged me to go deeper and further, to to have a greater expectancy. Is that okay to say that? To have a greater expectancy, to be able to ask God for things that I didn't dare to ask before. To be able to believe that God's going to do more than I could even imagine or think. And though I've said it many, many times, that's what he wants to do. That Jesus Christ became a curse. That, that's an amazing thing. So he could break the strongholds over people's lives. He became a curse so he could redeem us from that curse. In other words, he paid my debt. He paid my bill. I had a debt I couldn't pay, but I thank God that he paid it for me. My debt of sin is paid for in full. No remnants, no, no, nothing hanging on. You know, in Galatians, it starts off in Galatians 3, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should uh, not obey the truth? before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. You know, why are you, why are you going away from the Spirit to try to do it by the flesh? It won't work. Foolish Galatians. And then we know that in verse 13, it says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Redeemed us from the, from the curse of the law, becoming a curse for us. For as written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You know, I believe that we've received a portion, but I believe that there's so much more that God has for the church. When Jesus walked on the earth, he walked as a man. He walked as a man. He didn't walk as, as, as really, though he was the son of God, he emptied himself, the Bible says. And he left the throne of glory and he came down on this planet and he walked on this earth as a man. Using only uh, what was available through the covenant. He was working within the confines. He was working within the, within the, I guess, if I could say this, in what was available. You've got, to, you've got to understand what God has made available to us. It's not some, some skimpy thing, but it's all powerful and it's all, it's an amazing thing that God has given to us that we can latch onto, that we can glean from, that we can draw from. He, he, was, he walked as a man and, and he walked within the confines of that to show forth the glory of God. The Bible says, if you like to look with me in, in the book of Luke, and, and, and I, I, I read this many, many times. 
In Luke uh, chapter 4, verse 1, it says, And Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. Everybody say, by the devil. The devil was after him, was trying to destroy him, was trying to take him off course, was trying to, 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 to sow seeds of discord to, like he did with Adam and Eve, trying to take him off the purpose that he came for. And, 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 and here he is tempted by, by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. And afterwards when, he, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, See, one of the things that the devil will always try to do is try to take away or lie to you about who you really are. Children, we are children of God. I'm a child of God today. My mum and, as Nancy shares it so wonderfully, my mum and dad might have had a lot to do with it, but really I'm a child of God. You know that God knew us before our mum and dad did. <laughs> before we were formed in, our, in the mother's womb, he knew us. We're, we really belong to Him. They were the vehicles that brought us onto this planet. And while we're on this planet, we're to shine forth the glory of God. We're to acknowledge our dad. We're to acknowledge our father and what he's made available to us. That we might bring forth glory to His name. I believe we are the church have lost so much. We, we've lost so much. And, and our existence is, is limited. But God, I believe by His Spirit, is going to reveal things to us. And the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, prove it by commanding these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered and said, it is written. I'm amazed because Jesus didn't just say, I'm the son of God. I'm this. No, he said, it's written. Because you see, he moved within the same realm that you and I move in. The word of God. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. It is written. Everybody say, it is written. See, when, when, when something comes, like, like if the doctor says you're sick, you've got to find out what it says. What the Bible says, it is written, by my stripes you're healed. Now, we all know that, but we've got to, we've got to keep repeating it and, get, and repeating it and repeating it and repeating it until it gets out of our head and something drops into our spirit. And, you know, I am I'm really encouraged today. Here's a young boy, 14 years of age, in a small meeting. Everybody say small meeting. But God didn't see a small meeting. He didn't see a 14-year-old kid. He saw his child crying out to him, and he answered him. And, friend, if we can come with that attitude and not thinking, well, man, this is too hard for God, or this is impossible, or something like that. But if we can humble ourselves and fall on our faces and cry out to the creating God and say, God, I have need of you today. I have need of you. I am going through some stuff here, and I need you. And let God reveal to you something that's written in His Word word and it may be about finance it may be about health it may be about marriage it may be about other circumstances but I want to tell you that this book is the greatest how-to book you'll ever read in your life it'll tell you how to win it'll tell you how to get joy it'll tell you how to be victorious it'll tell you how to rule and reign it'll tell you how to overcome it'll tell you how to get healed it'll tell you how to get prosperous it'll tell you how to get whatever <laughs> is that okay but we've got to get hold of the Word of God. We've got to find out what God says. We've got, to let, we've got to hear that voice of God. We've got to have that encounter with God that somehow or other drops deep into our spirit that we know because we know because we know because we know. And of course, then, then we know that the, uh, then the devil taking him up to a high mountain showed him all the kings of kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and the devil said to him all this authority I will give to you and their glory because it's been delivered to me and I give it to whoever I wish therefore if you will worship before me all will be yours and Jesus answered and said to him get behind me Satan for what it is written you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. You see, what makes me uh, really t conscious today that the devil will use the word of God against the church. 
because he will try to distort it. And I want to tell you today, the church, there's so much stuff that, we, that we're believing wrong. Is it okay to say that? Because things, see, lies are being sown into our minds and into our things like, like that doesn't happen today or this won't happen today or God doesn't do this today or there's this and that and all this doctrines and religions and goodness knows what that's going on around the world. Friend, if ever there's a day that we need the Holy Spirit illumination on the Word of God, if ever there's a day we need a revelation knowledge, if ever there's a day we need the Spirit of God to fall on us again and shout with a loud voice, it is written this this is what my word says that will take away the sting and the lies of Satan that will cause us to stand again on the word of God and dare to believe for a revival that's going to sweep across the land. Dare to believe for a move of the spirit where, where multiple people will be healed and delivered and set free, where there'll be literally mosques and, 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 and whatever come to Christ. Amen. I'm believing that whole schools will come to Christ through the RI or whatever you call it. I believe that, that God has given us uh, different giftings and different things. But friend, we just can't go in there uh, to bash our gums. We've got to have the anointing. We've got to have the Spirit of God over us. We've got, we've got to cry out to God, friends. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And I want to tell you, friends, if you get a revelation, you get an understanding of what God wants to do in your life and you can get that on the inside, it'll cause you to stand. When you've done everything to stand, stand. Stand strong, church. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Sure, the enemy will try to sow discord. If he did it to Jesus, will he try it with the church? If he did it to others, will he try it with us? Yes, he will. Will he try to bring discouragement and disappointment and goodness knows what? Sure he will. Will he try to take you out? Sure he will. But friend, I want to tell you, we've got to know the word of God. We've got to be anchored. We've got to have that anchor. We've got to have that anchor. Because the devil came to him and said, it is written. It is written. He will give his angels charge over you to keep you. And if their hand... In their hand they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Father, help us today. Help us today. Jesus, you walked on this earth as a man. You used everything that was available to you. Lord, let us use what's available to us. You know, in Acts chapter 10, I would just want to have a quick look at that with you if you don't mind. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. And this is a church I believe that God wants to raise up today. We all know this scripture. And, and it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And with power. You know what? A lot of us have been filled with the Holy Spirit. A lot of us speak in tongues. But I want to tell you that there's something extra that God wants to bring upon the church. Amen. He just doesn't want a bunch of tongue talkers. I've seen tongue talkers that wouldn't have enough power of God to blow the fuzz off a peanut. Okay? <laughs> In our church, years ago, we had this bunch of people that came through that believed that if you didn't speak in other tongues, you weren't saved. And, and you know, that puts a lot of pressure on you. If you get born again, and these guys get hold of you, you've got you to you you speak in tongues. And you know, how many people had a little bit of diff difficulty getting tongues? Because of your a head, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, they'd be there and next minute they go, beep, and they'd say, that's it. <laughs> that's it. You got it. Beep, beep. Yeah, that's it. Because the pressure. <laughs> you know what people do under pressure? And you know, it, it, you got the beep. No, these people in the church were coming from this other place and you hear them up the back, beep, 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 beep. It got so bad that the mobile phone went off and somebody got up and gave the interpretation. <laughs> See, the Bible says here, now listen to this, this is what God did for Jesus and what God did for him, he'll do for us. Do you believe that? How God 
anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good, healing all who are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. We find out there after the book of Luke there where, where, God, where Jesus came and he spoke and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. After this, this, this attack that came upon him and he resisted the devil. And I want to tell you, friends, when you're in an attack, it's a good thing if you can keep hanging on because I want to tell you there's a victory, there's a deliverance coming your way. There's a deliverance coming your way. And Jesus, who was oppressed by the devil in every way, everything about him, they, they, they just poured it out upon him. And it says that the devil left him for a season, but Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. He had the anointing on him. There was something fresh on him. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he goes and he grabs the, the, the book and, and they gave it to him to read. And he spoke the, the word of God. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me. God has, has, has empowered me. There's something about the anointing, friends. You've got to get the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. Our musicians, friend, you can be the greatest musician in the world, but without the anointing, it's just a clanging cymbal. We've got to have the anointing. We've got to have the anointing, the anointing. I've got to have the anointing when I preach. Otherwise, I'm just bashing my gums together. I might as well stay at home. You too. <laughs> but don't, don't, please, give me a <laughs> And he, and he spoke about healing all the who are oppressed of the devil and, and, and all the things that God had anointed him to do. I, I, I often think about this because, you know, the devil there, here he is, he's trying to turn him off course. He's trying to get rid of him. And, you know, I want to tell you, young man, you are giving the devil hell because he thought that when you were 14, he had you and he pushed you down. He had his foot on your neck. But I want to tell you, standing up there this morning and sharing that, I want to tell you, he is in tears. You've given him a migraine. Hallelujah. You sent him, you sent him to the, to, the, to the dispensary. You sent him to the pill cupboard. Hallelujah. <laughs> All these things that, that God had, had given him and, and he returned in the power of the Spirit and, and he started to proclaim what God was going to do. And, and then he just didn't just say, well, that was a good thought. That was a good idea. He goes straight into the synagogue and all of a sudden that, now he's casting out demons and he's preaching the Word of God. What an amazing thing, friend. What an amazing thing how God anointed Jesus and how God will anoint you and how God will do great things for you. Spirit, Holy Spirit, and with fire. I, I believe that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The blessing of God wants to come upon us. The blessing of God wants to come upon us. I was listening to a, a, a DVD the other day and I was talking about the Holy Spirit coming upon us. We've been sharing it here. That's why somebody gave us a tape because that's what we've been sharing about the, over, the, the Holy Spirit overshadowing us. The Holy Spirit took a young girl, a, a, a virgin girl, and, and you know, caused her to bring forth the Son of God. Because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit overshadowed her. Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too difficult for God? Friend, I want to stir our belief system today. I want to stir us today that God has not started something that He's not going to finish with an abundance of power and anointing. I want to tell you, friends, when you know, a lot of people want the rapture to come, uh, they want the, you know, to hear the trumpet so they can go up to glory. But I want to tell you, I believe that the church on the living God, it's on, when it's on this planet with the power of God that God's going to pour out upon the church, that we're just going to see demons cast out. We're going to see people healed. We're going to see cities that can be saved in a night. We can have bad days, but friend, I want to tell you the day is coming and now is when God's going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. We're going to see a mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God that's going to eclipse anything that this world's ever seen. 